Hi everybody, DJ Lee here, and uh, I thought I'd do a quick video on a topic that came up for discussion over on the official Facebook page, and it has to do with utilizing the keyboard shortcuts and the problem some DJs run into when they think they're in the search pane uh, and they type a key and then it stops the music or maybe it triggers some other kind of event. And um, while I use hot cues and shortcuts all the time and I've never had that happen, I can see where it could be a problem. And I also can see where for those of us who uh, like to use the, the keyboard a lot, myself included, I use a keyboard as well as a controller, it might be helpful on occasion to be able to turn the keyboard shortcuts off for some reason and so um, take this information file it away and if it comes up as being something that you can use that will be great also I'm finding a little bit of a cold here so if you hear me clear my voice uh, I will apologize already so let me just go ahead and open up the screen the virtual DJ 8 here and um, the, my skin that I'm using right now is controller by Denio so I won't get into all of that but that's what you're looking at um, alright so First thing you would do is, well, you'll notice here, I have a song already highlighted, and as long as my keyboard shortcuts are activated, I can hit the return key and it will go ahead and load a track. If I hit the space bar, <coughs> it'll start the track, and I can stop the track. Um, I can also uh, go over and make sure I click on the search bar, start typing anything, and uh, you know it'll, it'll find tracks for me. However, if I'm here and I start traveling, typing tracks, not much will happen, but I have a key program to listen to my headphones, the X key. Um, if I hit that key, all of a sudden I'm going to hear music playing in the background and I'm not going to know what's going on. So one way around that is whenever you program uh, shortcuts is to use a combination key. If you use one key, you can get into trouble with that. Yeah, I uh, I use one key for my pre-listen because I very rarely type words that have the letter X in it. So for me, the X key is my pre-listen key. I've tried it with a combination, and having to hold down two keys for me while I'm in the heat of the mix, I just find it a little bit awkward. So, But that's just me. So if you don't want to deal with any of that at all, the best thing to do is to go on up to Settings, open up your Settings, and you can see here you've got you've got audio, you've got interface, and you've got controllers. Controllers is where you want to be. You can see that keyboard custom mapping is already highlighted, and this is where all of the default keyboard sh shortcuts are located. But anything that I've mapped is added to the default keyboard mapping, and is renamed. That file is already automatically renamed. I did not name this. It's already automatically named custom mapping <clears throat> and of course I can change the name of it if I want uh, so you can see that that's there but if I, and also it's notated under mapping right here it says custom mapping and if I want to ignore that or turn it off um, I just click on ignore everything over here disappears and that's telling me that I don't have access to those shortcuts anymore so if I go and I close this window now now, I highlight a track, if I hit the return key, nothing happens. I hit the space bar, nothing happens. But I can take that track using my mouse, and I can drag it to a deck. But if I hit the space bar, nothing happens. But as you can see here, I can start and I can stop it. Um, you know, if, if I wanted hot cue, I can set my hot cues. So I can do everything that I normally would do with my mouse. It's just nothing is going to happen as far as the keyboard is concerned. I can, you know, I can open up, create filters. I can change font size. Um, you know, I could, I can go in. I could look at my auto mix. I could look at my different folders. All of this is being done by the mouse. Okay. If for some reason I do want to use my shortcuts, then it's. Oh, by the way, you, you can't. I don't know if I said this, but. I can still I can still search, so the keyboard does work as far as the search field is concerned. To reactivate, I just go back 
to in, into settings, controllers, go over here, and just just reactivate my custom mapping. Just want to show you one other thing here too. If for some reason I want to go back and start all over to factory default, no harm, no foul. Uh, this just select that, and basically I'm back at factory default. And uh, it, but and also one other thing I wanted to mention: if you have been using Virtual DJ for a long time before Virtual DJ 8. You may have another keyboard mapping that's here, and uh, on mine it just says keyboard, and that's my old Virtual DJ 7 keyboard mapping. Now I can go over here and I can delete that, but I'm not going to. And the reason I'm not going to is because there are a lot of keyboard shortcuts that are no longer active in Virtual DJ 8. But I haven't had a chance to transfer, transfer some of these shortcuts, shortcuts over to, to Virtual DJ 8. So I want to keep them. It's kind of like an archive for me. It doesn't cause any harm. You know, I'm, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing when I'm in here. So it's not like I'm going to leave this set and then wonder why my program's not working properly for me. So um, that's it. Now, the other thing I... Oh, oh that's factory default. See, that, that can happen. The other thing I should mention to you is, just like you just saw me click on the wrong thing here, you get a little distracted when you're into the config situation here, especially when you go into options and you start opening things up, and you're scrolling along, and before you know it, you, you look to see what something is, and maybe you thought you clicked on this one and clicked yes, but you clicked on the one down below. Just be very alert when you're, anytime you're into the the settings portion of Virtual DJ 8. It's very powerful, but you can get in there and you can accidentally mess things up. Believe me, it, it's happened to me. To be on the safe side, if you're not the kind of person that likes to get in there and tool around, tinker with stuff, turn off advanced options. <clears throat> this way, the things that you might turn on by accident or turn off by accident, it's not going to really affect the performance of the program very much. Um, but if you get into some of these advanced options uh, where you start changing uh, things like um, you know how custom buttons work and uh, some of the other things, you may get a little bit on the frustrated side. So anyways, I tend to leave it open. I try to stay alert whenever I'm in here, and um, you'd be advised to do the same thing. All right, sorry for the long video. Sorry that it kind of was a little bit monotone, fighting a little bit of a cold here. But anyways, that's it for me. Hope you found the tip useful. I'm out. DJ Professor Lee.